I guess you can look at this problem in two parts. One is the explosion itself that creates the pressure. The other is the building that may be where the people are. So as the explosive goes off, it creates a very large pressure because it burns the explosive. And that overpressure travels with distance. And of course, it becomes smaller. Therefore, you like to have a larger distance. You keep a distance, a clear distance from the source to where your asset, it could be people or building. So creating distance is one thing you may want to do. Then now that the wave has reached the building, then you try to design the building strong. But there are two layers typically in the building uh, before the people or asset inside that you have structure itself. That's our typical columns, the walls, the beams and rooms that you have. Then there's the outer cladding, which can be aluminum frame or window glass panes. So as the pressure reaches the first layer, we first try and design strong. So the pressure that push on the glass gets transferred to the frame and then push the building and you make your building strong so as it shakes and it's over because in a very short time, the air just go over. But there are times the pressure is so high that you can damage the glass pan itself, then it breaks into small and large pieces. Then the small piece may not be so lethal, but the larger piece uh, flying at very high speed, they can cut people, become lethal. So what you would do then, not only trying to make it strong, there are cases that you know the pressure can exceed what you had designed. You want to make sure as it breaks, it doesn't have large pieces. And one way you can do it is to laminate on the glass itself, or as well as making the glass more rigid. So you break into smaller pieces. Some people call that safety glass, tempered glass. Then when it's exceeded, you'll be caught by the film behind it becomes a deforming process. So there are two ways we can take the force out. One is on the glass itself, that it deform a little bit, and then it may break, and it breaks into smaller pieces at slower speed, as soon as you move. The other way is that we design the window pane so strong, so you take the force to aluminum frame, say, that's anchored to the structure itself, the building. And we typically have some steel aluminum anchorage. And if you remember the force uh, reduction process, as one jumps down from a table to the ground, you cushion yourself a little bit by bending. And that takes a lot of force. So in the same way you can do is on the aluminum frame, it connects to buildings. If I design in such a way that is capacity, is smaller than what I expect the force on the frame. Then instead of breaking the frame or the window, you actually push the support a little bit in. As soon as you move just a little bit, one centimeter or less, the pressure drops substantially. Then you become safe. So that's one way. And then you take it to a building. Uh, what you do is you design a building strong so it doesn't move. Otherwise, you design flexible as you move, you will take out the energy and you will be safe. So that's the entire process from the beginning. Uh, you try to keep a distance. When it's getting contact, you're trying to be strong. But if you're going to fail, fail it in a nice way, so it's less lethal. If you're strong enough, make sure you're able to take the forces before you transfer it to the structure. So you don't cause a massive damage on the structure system if some of the elements that are critical in the building gets damaged because you transfer the force to that. And then damage your building will cause damage to the people inside, the assets, the equipments, and money that's inside. So that's the entire process.